Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. In this video, I'll be doing an advanced knowledge problem of the week. Uh, so for more problems of the week and for more advanced knowledge problems of the week, you can see the rest of our playlist on YouTube. And for the full uh, transcript of the problem and solution, you can visit the blog, which is linked in the description of this video if you're watching on our YouTube channel. So this week's um, advanced knowledge problem of the week um, was on the damped harmonic oscillator, which is a very a very common problem in physics and mathematics, something we often encounter in differential equations, and something I studied extensively when I took a dynamical systems course. So I thought that this was an interesting problem uh, for this week. So the problem was asking you to use linear stability analysis to determine, based on the proportions of the variables in relation to one another, uh, what the stability of the system was going to be at the fixed point or points. In this case, there's only one fixed point, but we'll get there. Okay. So when we're approaching this system, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to perform what's called the change of variables. And by change of variables, I mean we're going to set, our goal is to, so our goal before I do the change of variables is to see we have one um, second order differential equation and we want to turn this into a system of two first order differential equations. So to do that, I'm going to let x dot equal y. And just for clarification, the dots are derivatives with respect to time. So we have x dot equals y, therefore x double dot equals y dot. So now, substituting this change of variables in here, I'm going to, I'm going to put, uh, here we have m, and then x dot, which we know is equal to y dot, excuse me, y dot. So we have m times y dot plus b, x dot equals y, so we're gonna plug in y here and then plus kx equals zero. So now I'm going to solve for y dot. So I'm going to bring both of these to the other side. So we have m times y dot um, whoops, equals negative by minus kx. Divide everything by m to get y dot by itself. So now we have here y dot equals negative b over m y minus k over m. So now I'm going to write this as a system of two first order coupled differential equations. So now we know that x dot is just equal to y. And we know that y dot from here is equal to negative b over my minus k over mx. So this is going to be the system that we're working with. So now before I continue on to write the Jacobian matrix, we need to find the fixed points of this system. And the fixed points of this system are going to be points where x dot, y dot equals um, zero. Uh, so we're going to call these fixed points x star, I'll write this here, x star, y star. So as we can see here, might be a little bit difficult to see. As we can see here, the only point at which x dot is equal to zero is when y is equal to zero. So we know that y, y star has to be equal to zero. So if y star is equal to zero, this entire term is going to go to zero. And the only way that y dot can be zero then is if x star is also zero. Oops, this is y. So we know here that our fixed point x star y star is equal to zero, zero. So there's just a single fixed point in this system, which is at the origin. And this is independent of the proportions or the ratios of the variables, or of the parameters, excuse me, to one another. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to calculate what's called the Jacobian matrix. So the Jacobian matrix, which I'll call A, is equal to, as you may be familiar with, partial x dot, partial x, partial x dot, partial y, partial y dot, partial x, partial y dot, partial y. And this is all evaluated at our fixed point, x star, y star. So now, I'm going to calculate uh, the Jacobian matrix of this system here, which I'll call A sub OS for oscillator. 
So the partial derivative of x dot with respect to x is going to be 0. Uh, the partial derivative of x dot with respect to y is going to be equal to 1, because the derivative of y with respect to y is 1. Uh, the partial derivative of y dot with respect to x is going to be negative k over m. And the partial derivative of y dot with respect to y is going to be negative b over m. And we evaluate this at our fixed point, x star y star, which equals 0, 0. And this is going to be equal to the same thing, as we have no variables here. <clears throat> uh, so, okay. We have 0, 1, negative k over m, negative b over m. Okay, so there we have our Jacobian matrix. So now the next step in this procedure is going to be um, finding the eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix. And the eigenvalues, as you may be familiar with, um, of a matrix are just the places where, <clears throat> or the lambda such that the determinant of A um, minus lambda times i, in this case, i2, which is the identity matrix, uh, two by two identity matrix, the places where the determinant of this is equal to zero. So in our case, we have here determinant a sub os minus lambda i2 equals zero. So using the, uh, this notation for determinant, so we're going to do <clears throat> Here, I'll just rewrite this. Uh, determinant AOS minus lambda I2 equals here. And then these horizontal bars denote the determinant. Um, <clears throat> the determinant, so we'll have here in the upper left negative lambda because 0 minus lambda, 1, negative k over m, and then negative b over m minus lambda. So now we need to take the determinant of this matrix. <clears throat> so we are going to do that by uh, multiplying these and subtracting off these, as one finds the determinant by the standard formula for a two by two matrix. Um, so we have the determinant of that equals negative lambda times negative B over M minus lambda minus negative k over m times 1. So this is just plus k over m. And I'll erase this over here so it's not all jumbled up. <clears throat> OK. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply across the negative lambda here. So we have negative lambda times negative b over m is b over m lambda. Negative lambda times negative lambda is plus lambda squared plus k over m. And then putting this, considering lambda as a variable, putting this in order of uh, decreasing exponents, we have lambda squared plus b over m lambda plus k over m. OK, so what we need to do now is we need to use a quadratic formula uh, to find the values, value or values of lambda. So, using the quadratic formula here, oops, we have lambda equals negative b, so b is b over m, so we have negative b over m plus or minus the square root of b squared, so we have b over m squared, b over m quantity squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is k over m, all over 2 times a, which is, and a is 1, so we just have 2 here on the bottom. So now um, I can simplify this out under the radical here. So we have lambda equals negative b over m plus or minus the square root quantity b over m squared minus 4k over m, all over 2. So as we see here, 
we have uh, three, we're going to have three possible cases for what um, our eigenvalue is, eigenvalues are going to be. So we have the case here, uh, the, well, so the essential part of this expression is going to be this value here under the radical. So there's three possible ways in which this could, these could, this could play out with relation to the variables in proportion to one another. So the first case is going to be where quantity b over m squared minus 4k over m is equal to zero. <clears throat> the second case is going to be where quantity b over m squared minus 4k over m is greater than zero. And the last case, of course, is going to be where b over m quantity squared minus 4k over m is less than zero. So right now I'm just going to do a quick qualitative analysis, uh, phase plane, kind of graphing a sample trajectory or a couple um, possible phase planes for each one of these so that we can see what kind of the behavior is. And I'm going to identify the real and imaginary parts of the eigenvalues which will help us determine the, not only the phase plane behavior but also which type of damping it corresponds to. Graphing the phase planes in this situation helps significantly because you get kind of a, you get a more, you can get a more clear idea of what's going on that extends beyond just numerical analysis. So looking at, looking at the first case here where we have b over m quantity squared minus 4k over m equals zero. So if we look here, if this quantity is equal to zero, this entire radical goes to zero. So we're just going to have one eigenvalue um, with an algebraic multiplicity of two. And the, eigen, the dimension of the eigenspace is actually just going to be one in this case. I'm not going to go through the calculation of the eigenvectors or the calculation of the eigenspace or dimension of the eigenspace. But if you do so, you will know that um, in case one, there is one single defective eigenvalue. So algebraic multiplicity of two, uh, dimension of the eigenspace, uh, is equal to one. So we can see that the real part of the eigenvalue is going to be equal to negative b over 2m because in order to have some kind of imaginary part here we would need to have this be less than zero here under the radical and this entire thing goes to zero so all we're left with is b over 2m. And so therefore we know that the imaginary part of the eigenvalue is equal to zero. So if we have, just do a quick phase plane graph here of x versus x dot, um, you're going to have one degenerate node at the origin, which means that any trajectory starting from any initial conditions here um, will approach the origin like so. So we can see that this case corresponds to critical damping. OK, so I'll try to, actually, I'll just erase this over here. OK, so we've taken care of the first case. So I'll just erase that. OK, um, so in the second case, um, in which b over m quantity squared minus 4k over m is greater than zero. As you can see, because this quantity was under a radical, um, we are going to not, because it's greater than zero, there will not be any imaginary part to the eigenvalue. Um, but the real part of the eigenvalue, so, okay. There will be two eigenvalues because we have plus or minus the square root of this. So there are two distinctive eigenvalues, each with algebraic multiplicity of one. So it's not uh, defective. The eigenvalues are not defective. So we are going to have um, two eigenvalues. Um, I'll just put lambda 1 comma 2 is equal to negative b over m plus or minus. So lambda 1, I guess it doesn't really matter which direction you do it in, but you could say lambda 1 equals plus, lambda 2 equals minus. That's how you get two distinctive eigenvalues here. Um, plus quantity b over m squared minus 4k over m over 2. 
So we know that the real part of eigenvalue equals this because there is no imaginary part. So we know that the imaginary part of lambda also goes to zero. So I'll write this down here so we can draw the phase plane. Okay. X versus X dot. So as you can see, this is a standard notation for phase plane, x versus x dot, where x dot just equals y. So you could alternatively consider this as x versus y. Um, so we're also going to have, again, as we noted here, the origin is our only fixed point, stable or unstable. In these cases, it's always stable. Um, and we are going to have a what's called a nodal sink here, which exhibits behavior similar to this on the phase plane. but. Uh, it will tangentially approach the origin somewhere along this eigenvector here. Um, so it'll look something like with extremely sharp approach here. Um, so something like this. So this case corresponds to, uh, I suppose I should draw arrows on these trajectories here to make it clear what's going on. Flow is going toward the origin here. Flow is going toward the origin here. And on the phase plane, um, you would have direction vectors corresponding like this surrounding here, which determines your behavior based on your initial conditions. So this case here corresponds to overdamping. So we have one more case, which, as you can imagine, uh, corresponds to underdamping. Okay, so in our last case where b over m quantity squared minus 4k over m is less than zero, as you can see here, this quantity is going to be less than zero under the radical, so we're going to have an imaginary part to our eigenvalue. So, whoops. A real part of our eigenvalue is just going to be equal to negative b over 2m as before, because we have this as the real part and this is the imaginary part. Um, and in lieu of writing out the imaginary part, I'm just going to say imaginary part of lambda is not equal to zero. This is the isolated case where we actually do have a complex conjugate eigenvalue, or eigenvalues, excuse me. Okay, so we have a phase plane here. Oops. Um, x versus x dot. X dot, excuse me. Wow. Okay. Um, x versus x dot, we're here. Um, the origin is a spiral sink. And note here that the trajectories never cross. So this case corresponds to. Underdamping. So now we have identified what the proportions of the different parameters mean with respect to what kind of damping uh, the system undergoes. Although it took quite a while, it's a very, it's, this is a very useful result that is used many places throughout differential equations. And this kind of procedure is used very often to help kind of linearize behavior on the phase plane to make it easier to analyze because as we know, linear things are much, much, much easier to analyze than, um, than nonlinear things. Okay, so for more Problem of the Week videos, you can check out our playlist here, our Problem of the Week playlist. For more math videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. And for more math content and to look at our affordable textbooks, visit us at centerofmath.org. Thank you for watching.